Hi guys, I want to post this um, now because I think it needs to be posted now. It's about addressing some of the comments underneath the video that I posted about the cats and the trees, the microwave frequencies, and the cats acting uh, rather strangely, the feral cats. I want to read some comments. Um, and actually, the first one has to do with human beings acting strangely. Are you finding human beings acting a little strangely? Well, these frequencies affect our brains. I have a friend in Texas, and she has been acting very different lately. She says something is going on with her. She is not herself at all. She won't call me back and talk, wondering if others are experiencing different behavior from loved ones. You're behaving pretty much the same. Um, yeah, I would say it's not just in Texas, it's all over. And I will also say that I identify with those who have left comments saying that they're not themselves anymore. I'm not myself. I haven't been for years. And I would say that I'm losing more and more of me. Um, this is no joke, this fight that we are engaged in. Or are we engaged in a fight? Well, what we're doing is just kind of reporting on events and watching destruction. <laughs> but if any of you um, are experiencing people in your lives behaving differently, drop a comment below. Um, Maybe you can build them a little Faraday cat hut outside. I can't. I live in an apartment complex. And those of you who saw the video that I posted, I don't know, a couple of months ago, on what was happening here, uh, my getting an eviction notice that was based on lies. Why? Because I complained about the continual noise. It has been incredibly stressful living here since March. No joke. And now the cats are causing me stress. Stress that, don't worry, I do not take out on them at all because it's so not their fault. But I I have no resources, I have no money. And this is what I live in, all right? So those of you who think that I'm scamming people, I've had people post videos, and I'm scamming people that I have money, I'm an attorney, and oh my God, this is what I live in. This is it, all right? This is my box, that's the kitchen, door to the right is the bathroom. This is it. This is the front. This is the back. That's it. That's the entirety of my place. It's not a home. I haven't had a home since 2012 when I left Great Barrington. And it's... Um, I've never lived like this that causes a lot of stress, just um, being in a position where you can't get out of, you buster. That's buster. And this is bandit. Buster and bandit. Buster was a stray bandit. Feral walked into my apartment, decided, hmm, don't want feral anymore. Well, apparently, all of the cats around here don't want feral. Are you wanting to go out? He knocks on the screen. The video that I posted, you saw or heard. 
the cats knocking on the screen. I wonder if they saw Buster knocking on the screen. Buster's like a dog. Buster hates the litter box. If Buster needs to go outside, Buster will hit the screen and I will get up and open the door. When Buster wants to come back in, Buster jumps up on this uh, ledge that I have right outside the window, knock on the screen, and I will let Buster in. So, Buster wants to go out. Um, Do you? Yes, no? Are you going to go out? Buster. Yes or no? What do you want to do? Mm hmm? Go ahead. Buster. Okay. I'm doing thank you very much. Okay. Um, yeah, look, guys, I don't... Yeah, I've been through too much, and... Humiliated and shamed and betrayed and devastated and lied to and lied about and it's been a trip. So I don't care anymore. Um, but I am somebody who cares about animals and some of the um, comments that I was getting I was afraid that people were thinking, you know, these cats were starving and, well, um, and not being cared for. You can trust <laughs> that while I can't have them as it is what's happening, I'm just so not living what I lived and anything new is now kind of freezing my brain. I go into this, I, I can't think, I can't figure things out, I can't... Look, I've been saying honestly that my functioning, I'm having difficulty just on the basic level. I'm not lying. People think I'm fine because I can post. Understand that, you know, this has been four decades. Uh, I've been a rather serious human being, I guess, in terms of my interests and, you know, research and communicating back. What I've researched is hardwired for me. I'm not doing it the way I was capable of doing it before, but I can still do it, and new information, I can't go there anymore because I don't have that brain power to, to really concentrate on new fields because you actually have to learn the language of the field, so I'm sticking pretty much with what I know. I'm not posting on the latest and greatest current event because I can't. I can't. There's something about repeating and repeating and repeating and repeating. I can't do it. We've been living the same drama year after year after year. And I just, I, I'm so thoroughly done with government and all of these, this crazy, immature behavior that it's just repulsive to me, you know. The liberal, progressive Democrats, how is it that Americans are not seeing? that this behavior in our leaders is so despicable. It's just so reprehensible. It's so immature. It's so disgusting. 
but they do it because that's that's the kind of behavior that a lot of Americans have but they want to see if Americans are going to have any kind of response to this sickening disgusting bullying and it's like I, I feel like I'm just living in high school or junior high school the Maxine Waters Obama apparently was attacking Trump I don't know a couple of days ago and Trump I'm sorry this man is really you're watching people who really have just no dignity at all and I I'm somebody who desperately needs to see change and I don't see it I see what I see is um, more and more destruction and suffering and a lot of subscribers going down and it's not going to stop. You know, the, the most important agendas that were really focused on during the Obama years are not being focused on much, except for a few. The geoengineering, the weather warfare, the depopulation. You want to make America great again? You focus on getting the health of the nation back which means the health of the population the people we have a very very sick population now extremely sick physically just physically and you look at the vaccines you look at how many vaccines these kids are getting, all of the psychiatric medications that they're on, Common Core, still in place. So no, making America great again does not mean just, hey, lying about the economy, saying Americans are back at work. We're so money-focused. Everything is about making money. While Americans are being killed off. Either a slow kill or a fast kill. One of the orange cats are here. Yeah, this is very hard for me. You want to you wanna create a lot of heartache and stress put in my face animals in need and now I have no resources and no money thank you for the donations because well you pay for cat food and uh, vet bills Buster's paw, floppy ears, another, I think her father, this one's father, and I think all of these orange cats. But I have been trapping and neutering, spaying. I think I got 11 so far. I so want to get her mother, and she's so difficult because she will not go in a cage at all. And twice I got her, I cuffed her by the neck. She is, um, sometimes I'll be walking in the parking lot and she'll come right up to me and, you know, rub against my leg, allow me, if I go very, very slowly, you know, to pet her. So, um, I was able to scruff her by the neck once I got I have a neighbor here 
we're the only two working on trying to get all of these cats spayed and neutered and you know this burden would be so lifted if everybody would just pitch in and care about the community animals you know isn't that what Christians are supposed to be doing? This is Christian territory. Nobody cares. Anyway. Um, so, the father of a lot of the orange ones was trapped and neutered. But then he had an ear infection. Callie, who was another abandoned kitten. What is it, sweetie? Um, got trapped and spayed, and she had a broken toe, broken claw. I can't walk away from this. I have been laughed at because of my concern about animals. What are you doing, sweetie? Come on. Um, I rescued a horse that was a Mustang, not a BLM Mustang, but a, an incredible black stallion Mustang caught in Mexico, used as, used by two ranches. He had brands on either side of his hind on his way to slaughter in Canada and I worked eight months to get that horse out of the hands of a woman who well so I can't walk away you know and I don't know how to do that. I've never had that in me. You know, my sister told me in our one of our few conversations, she said she was sitting with her son. They were watching Happy Feet. He was, I don't know, how old? Two, three, four, five, I don't know. Something, I don't, I've never seen Happy Feet. But there was a really sad part in Happy Feet, and he was crying and crying, and she couldn't console him, and kept saying, "Don't worry, don't worry. Watch what happens. Everything's going to be fine." Every could not console him, and she thought to herself, "God, I hope he doesn't turn out like Carol, because apparently I'm just too sensitive." So, this hurts a lot, and it's very hard and does cause a lot of stress because I do want to just open the door and let them all in, you know, get them spayed, neutered, and, and I can't. I'll get evicted. The property manager does not like me. Well, I did want to just post this video to let you know that no, these cats are not starving at all and um, how do I find a home for them? I don't, I don't, I don't have any life here. Um, I have no, you know, I spend 98% of my time alone. Um, people would leave comments saying, take a few days off, relax, do things that you enjoy. I, I, I'm not living what you, what you live. I haven't been living that since 2012. And I don't want to go into what happened with my life. Suffice it to say, it did get completely emptied out and destroyed. And... I know evil. I have. I was born into it. I've tried to survive it for 60 years. 
the malignant narcissistic mother so severe she created a family of pathological narcissists the only reason why I escaped the pathology of narcissism was because I was designated the scapegoat evil does not stop when it wants to destroy there is no conscience if it wants to destroy doesn't care if you're related doesn't care if you happen to be a daughter it will not stop and what I've lived is not what most people live so I know that this evil is far bigger than Trump if he is not part of it and one man can't stop it we needed we needed an army a force of good not sitting around doing nothing because if it is not confronted and stamped out it flourishes and it will succeed because it never stops so because I've not been able to work and because this is what I've always been about I have for many many years had the time to really get a big picture view of what is taking place in this country and I may have a different perspective than a lot of you because I have had the time to go through many sites and many articles I, I don't do it anymore because I, I don't because I bottomed out on that and because I saw alright none of this is stopping and we're not changing so this is just going to continue and the most important agendas continue to carry on those agendas escalating and if we can't get those agendas stopped then that's it you know more and more of us will get sicker and sicker so the air is poisoned, our food is poisoned, our water is poisoned. This technology, this wireless manifestation of our world, has really, that alone is enough to knock off much life. And we're seeing it and I see it every single day something has happened drastically this past year it's so different the how visible is nature dying and I know myself that I'm experiencing differences different kinds of symptoms related to the frequencies as well as a deterioration that is scary not like oh I'm gonna sit in a corner and quiver scary in terms of wow 
the rapidity. I'm seeing it. I'm seeing it in the trees. I'm seeing it um, in nature. I'm seeing it in the sky. I'm feeling it in me. I'm reading it in your comments. But everybody is, yay, Trump is making America great again. So there's a, we're not on the same page. And this 5G rollout, oh my God, is going to really. Those of us who are sensitive already to the 4G, the cumulative effect of everything. I have reduced my exposure to almost nothing. I hardly ever talk on the phone. Uh, when I do, I use my flip top and it's on speaker and I hold it away from me. I'm hardwired. Doesn't matter though. Wi Fi in both apartments and smart meters and that's it. That's all I use. Nothing else. I sit far back from my screen. I'm about three feet away from my screen. Um, but something definitely has changed. Now I see it on the sites that I go to, the radar sites. Um, I do believe that they are using these frequencies to mind control. And they may have um, been using it on an awful lot of Trump supporters who are quote-unquote awake because they sure have changed. A lot of them. Uh, during the Obama years, critical thinking, taking an objective look at what was going on, understanding you know, that everything was a lie, coming out of the Obama administration, all the lies about the economy and, oh, 250,000 jobs every month and everything's a lie. Trump comes in, suddenly everything's the truth? Really? But does it matter? All of this war, uh, wall talk, oh my God, wall. I mean, that's been a political football that has been tossed around periodically since Reagan. It's, it, the wall will not be, even if it begins the construction, it's not going to be up for years and years. But we don't need it. We don't need it. We've got the active denial system. We have laws that we can just enforce. Trump doesn't um, abide by the Constitution. He has not done anything about the vaccines, so children are still getting injected with incredible amounts of poison, toxic metals that destroys their health, Common Core still operating. Their critical thinking and creativity, gone. So, the wall. Oh, great. Who cares? Enforce the laws. Hey. Um... The wars continue, the bombing continues, Yemen is the killing of innocent children of Trump, the starvation of a people in Yemen. I, I'm like flabbergasted at how anybody can support Trump and you're awake. It's like so many have just dove right back into the matrix. Anyway, sorry for going on. And yeah, that's my brain now. I, I get so... I don't know. Sometimes I just don't even know how to control what I'm saying, that it just goes off on tangents. and 
Um, another comment. When you said that they run away when you try to get near them, yet still want to be in your place, that seems off. Yeah, it is off. Um, there's only two that will allow me one one a kitten that I trapped and she got spayed and the other one is a black kitten that just showed up what's happening is uh, this man who fed an awful lot of cats that were down further the apartment complex that I never even saw he moved these cats are now coming up so um, but I couldn't open my door today without two of them parked right outside and they bolt in go underneath the couch and they won't let me because they're scared um, they keep running the feralness you know if I keep the door open they're okay but if I close that door then they they're like okay they start getting very nervous because there's no escape that's typical feral behavior so for those who said can I find a home I don't trust people anymore I'm now living in South Carolina and yeah, people abuse and neglect animals up north. But here it just seems like it's way too often. And I am scared because I don't want to just be dropping off cats to people and I don't, I don't have any connection here. I don't know people. I have no network here. I have nothing, literally nothing. Um, and the other neighbor that works, you know, with me, she doesn't know what to do either. If I called animal control, and place this problem on them, what would they do? They would come, pick them up, trap, spay and neuter, and then release them right back here. So my problem with they wanting in, it would still exist. Would the shelter take them? I don't think so. You know, there are so many cats and dogs that need to be adopted. I can't imagine that they would be taking in feral. And this animal shelter here, I don't really particularly like. Um, it's, it, things have changed, okay? Things have really changed. And, um, I just wish that people would care and it wouldn't be any problem, you know? Let me put out some, you know, homes. I'll get evicted and I have nowhere to go. Yes, some of you have offered, but I can't do that anymore. I can't. First of all, I don't have a car to just drive around to different states, and my experiences were not, on the whole, they were not good. My trust has been pretty much leveled, and I'm not in a good, um, I'm not in good condition, and I would never place myself in somebody's home, not with how I am now no way. You know, I feel like a burden and I have my entire life, but I now 
not how I am. I'm not okay. You know, when you get thrown out of your own life and you can't get it back, and because of your circumstance, you have 24-7 every day, stress, frustration, um, you can't figure things out, you're on overload and overwhelm, but you have no options. So you're like, when you need the help of family and you're not so lucky to have that help, you're you begin to live something that not a lot of people understand. You face an awful lot of judgment from people because they don't understand it. And you get to experience on social media, even in real life, you know, people look at you and they think your experience is their experience and no. Not at all. Not at all. Cyber world, awful lot of people think I'm living something similar to what you guys are living. You couldn't be more dead wrong. So, um, one person left a comment saying, open open the darn door or let the darn cats come in. I'd find a place in my home for them. I live in a box. I don't live in a home. And as it is, my property manager doesn't even know I have these two cats. And they walked in. I didn't pick them up. I got accused of domesticating them. This is the last thing that I wanted. Not that they, I look at this, you know, and she's sleeping on my lap, just looking at her. Wow, these frequencies are going wild. Something has definitely changed. These high-pitched tones last way longer and the buzzing is so loud, but it's a weird, scratchy kind of buzzing. But, yeah, I can just look at her. And this is that moment of joy. But I do worry about them, because now, I don't know what's going to happen to me. So then I don't know what's going to happen to them. And I don't want them split up, because Bandit and Buster are really a duo. Anyway, um, but I'm not somebody who can deal with in tight, tight quarters so many. I can't. It would really <laughs> do a number on me. As it is, it does a number on me for hours during the day. I can't now leave my door open. I need my door open. I need light in here. I need air. I don't do the air conditioning. I, I've always hated air conditioning. So everything has changed. I have no comfort. I have nothing. Um, and it's... When you add something else in that I can't fix or yeah, it's creating more and more overwhelm, and um, but I am obviously similar to a lot of you. You can't walk away. You can't ignore. You want to help, and if I, for one second, saw a video 
and I thought, what is this person doing? Are they not feeding them? That would be the kind of thing that I would be very concerned about, so I didn't want any of you to be concerned. They are well taken care of. I can't not just let an animal that needs to see a vet, I can't walk away. I don't have the money, though. I don't have the money for these guys. I'm like, whoa, oh my god, um, what has my life become? A stress mess. Wow. And then so many people, get a job. Oh, you have no clue. <laughs> oh. Everything takes real concentrated effort and thought, like changing. No joke. Now, I know I'm saying things that a lot of people just won't believe. I don't care. I don't care. You know, the truth in this country, trying to find people who really care about truth and trust and not lying and couldn't even find that. This life has really just been one hell of a trip that Well, it is what it is. Um, this had to be brutal for you. <laughs> it's brutal. It's hurt. It hurts. Anybody want to donate a house with some property? I'd take them all. Cats are spiritual protectors. Treat them well. You don't have to worry about that. I... I was once known for being that one where friends would say, if I die, I want to come back as Carol's dog. It's hard also not being known. No one knows you. No one knows who you used to be. It's a weird life. Surreal. Kafka Winston world. Kafka. That's what my life became Kafka-esque. When I had the stroke and needed help from a malignantly narcissistic family that, whoa, turned my life into a... into... You want to try to figure out what the hell is going on 24-7, year after year after year after year after year? They can do a number, boy. Other people are having difficulties with feral cats here. Um, there were eight outside my door yesterday, all begging to come in, but they won't let me touch them. I keep um, good out for them, food, good food, maybe you left it out, that food word, um, and a few will come in if my door is open. They cry all the time. It's heartbreaking. It is heartbreaking. Um, God will bring revenge. Hmm. When? You gotta find those guys some homes. You wanna come help me? Ferals are decidedly at they're decidedly agitated. The twitchy head ear movements seem to be indicating a look out and even up as they flinch and move their heads, but something they can sense and we can't has them going. Have you talked to the local cat and dog rescue places? 
um, the one person that has a nonprofit and she traps and spays and neuters. She knows rescue people, but no help can be found there. Um, and what would a rescue do with feral? You take feral cats from one place and you put them in another place. Um, I have to tell you, these cats have a really good life out here. They're in a safe environment, not with the frequencies, but it's a parking lot. Um, there are places, you know, there are places that they can go to be inside. They just want to be in the apartment. Somebody left under... I lost all credibility because I wasn't filming these cats going up to other apartments or so. I don't know. Um, I'm the one with the window open. I need light. I can't sit in a little tiny box and not see any outside. And all I see is a parking lot anyway. But there's like a Native American in me, I think. And I would have been much happier being born hundreds of years ago. A Native because I think that they live the way I've always craved. But I'd sleep outside if I could. I've always been needing the outdoors. And, oh yeah, they're the geoengineering, and people would say, you're crazy, you should be inside because of the air. You want to take everything away from me? Um, so, come on, come on, baby. That was Buster. Come on, baby. Buster. Come on, let's go. Buster. Buster, come on. Come on, let's go. Come on. Get back in here. Hurry up before kittens start running in. What do you want? Okay. All right, let's do this. Come here. Come here. Hi, guys. Okay. Ah! He will growl and hiss. And he, he's very, he's dog, he's a dog, he's a dog. A neighbor came by with her dog on a leash. And there were kittens. And the dog came running up, charged on the leash. But this dog, I'm not a, wouldn't do anything because if the cat hissed, it run the other way. Buster came flying out of the apartment. Back. Never saw a cat arch. Hissing. The dog, <laughs> it was a little, like, chihuahua thing, but, oh my God, was it wailing scared of Buster. Buster is very much, and he bites me. Thank you. <laughs> I didn't want anybody to be worried. They are very well taken care of, even those who are outside. A neighbor does have cat houses. She said some of the orange ones were staying in the cat houses that she put out outside. If she gets evicted, she has a place to go. And the rules are very arbitrary here, so... I just can't take any more problems or any more stress, so... I, I'm on the down low. Um, so no, I can't do any houses. Um, I don't trust 
just handing them off to people I don't know. And this week starts more trapping to get them spayed and neutered, and my God, I've got to get that mother. Oh, when I did finally get, you know, scruff the neck, boy, was she fierce. And she, like, whipped around so fast that she literally just, like, unscrewed herself from my grasp, and boom, was gone. Then the second time I got her, I needed the neighbor's help. And when I got her, and got her in the cage, the door wasn't closed quick enough. She's got to be caught because she is... She's the mother of four, she's the mother of bandit. And she will have another litter. So yeah, they do get out of hand. It's really... I'm sorry for going on so long. Consider this a just talking video. And, you know, at this point, I do want to post the video on, one more video on the effects. This radar, this microwave, these extremely low frequencies. Reading in comments that you guys have left. There are an awful lot of you who are affected by this now, so... And then after that, you know... I'll keep posting because I can't not. I said I would continue until the fat lady sings. Though I think she's warming up. I can hear her doing some exercises. But I just, I, I frankly, now, I just want to do just talking. Um, I really needed to see some change. I needed to find people who were actively involved. I didn't, I've not had any of my needs met since I left Great Barrington. It's been quite a trip. Um, but maybe I'll post a video talking about my experiences since I left and traveling around living in my car, homeless. Unbelievable. What? You want to come up? Come on. Who I am is Not someone who I will, even if I have, well, I have not had any money. It's never been a case anymore, but they'll be taken care of even before me. That's no joke. Right? I mean, come on. You gotta admit. She's pretty cute. Bandit and Buster. First night she walked in, I couldn't believe it. Actually, it was during the day. And she just walked right in, went right underneath the couch. I was like, okay. 
that my door has to be closed now, that's upsetting me. But my door was open. And when I closed it, I thought for sure that's when she was going to freak. She came walking out from the couch, looked at the door, and then walked right back. Feral? This is not feral behavior. This is very weird. And I didn't do anything. I didn't approach her. I, but I laid down and I take this mattress off. I can't. It has a metal frame. Metal is a conductor of the frequencies. So that goes on the floor. <laughs> I think about my life, you know, Jesus, what the hell did you go to Smith for? law school and to end up like this. Do you think I would be here if my family cared about me at all? There are so many obviouses that just go over people's heads. But I was lying there. No joke. Suddenly I felt she petting me, my hand, her paw, literally rubbing my finger. Not 24 hours later, she was trying, but she was so small, trying to jump up on my lap and couldn't quite make it. This is weird. It's just weird. And this, she came in three days after Buster walked in. And Buster and I didn't have a good start to our relationship. And I never fed him. I would run out and break up fights between he and this, uh, her father, the orange cat, whose territorial I believe that Buster was just left behind. They do a lot of leaving behind their pets when people move here. And they, these two males, they were just getting into it, fighting all the time. I was like, Jesus, running out. And I'd be yelling at Buster. But he, would, he wouldn't run away. The other one, well, he then, I caught him, got him neutered. Suddenly he's walking up, no longer acting feral. But he now, for the past like two weeks, have, has just been incredibly aggressive towards the other adult cats, running them off. But the fights that he and Buster would have, I'd run out, he'd run away, Buster would look at me and growl. <laughs> growl? That was the first thing I said, you growl? You're growling at me? Caught him. He got neutered. But, I mean, how many fights did I break up between these two? And I was always yelling at Buster because it was Buster who was chasing. That was my relationship with Buster. So he decides to walk into my apartment and make it his own. That I thought was rather unusual. And then three days later this one shows up. And these two couldn't be more in love. So they can't be split up. I, will, I can't split them up. I put these two into a... She's still a little like skittish around other people. But I bring them to a shelter and say, please don't split them up. It's not going to happen that way. She's still kitten, cute-like, and she'd be scooped up. Buster would sit in a cage. I can't do it. And it's interesting how personal issues 
are always involved. Our past is always in our present. So I'm the unwanted scapegoat. And really unwanted. This isn't me saying, oh, mommy didn't love me enough. No. Unwanted. Um, and I've been erased. I don't I don't have family. I, I just exist. I sometimes feel like I am from another planet just here to observe how the earthlings operate. Because I've been observing my entire life. Never really feeling a part of. Always outside, looking in. But the neglect was pretty severe. There was no, like, you know, mommy sitting down, reading a book, or there was nothing. No guidance, nothing. So, I had to watch a lot of people to figure out how to live, how to do things properly. And I've been observing my entire life. And it's not anything that, it's just hardwired. I just observe. You come out of these really violent homes, and um, when the violence can come out of nowhere, over nothing, and you're a kid who's constantly very alert. So you grow up with that, what they call this hypervigilance. I'm actually grateful for it because it gave me an awareness of my surroundings, an awareness of you, and an awareness of me eventually. But, um, so, for me not to let them in, it triggers that unwantedness. Because I never, I don't want them to feel unwanted. No joke. I did, I volunteered at shelters. I did some rescue myself. Things got so bad that I couldn't, I couldn't even walk into a shelter. Because looking at all of the unwanted. And taking an animal to a shelter. Well, very hard for me. And as you can see, Clearly, I haven't been able to do it. <laughs> All right. Sorry I went on so long. I have nobody to talk to. So, I talk to you guys. Have a good night. Have a good tomorrow. Ciao.